and so on some news lady zamar recently touched on a rape allegations against java from explaining her recording when she said she threatened to take legal action against java's producer raf in order to get Java's attention. Also explaining why she felt it was necessary for her to still address this matter in 2023, as well as her long Twitter post questioning why people hate her so much. But before we get to her explanation, here's a sneak peek of the recording in question. And I was trying to get your attention. Hey, How can you get, try to get my attention by sending Raf that? Why couldn't you call me and say, Take out my phone. I didn't have your number and I was not willing to talk to you. If you were not willing to talk to me, so I would not. So, where did you get my number me. now? I got it from Bones. Because I couldn't stay anymore. So, so why didn't you not treat me or send me a DM? Because I, I was adamant to not be the first one to reach out when you are the one that did not even try. So. If you're saying you're trying to get my attention by sending that to Ralph, now because we deleted the saw, what must happen? Yeah, I'm here as I talk. Wait, wait. I'm done, I'm coming. Yeah. Why did you delete the song? Because the song doesn't exist anymore without those harmonies. But why would you delete it? Why wouldn't you try? You see, this is the thing. Why, why trying to get someone else to do it? No, why don't you try to talk to me? That's what. I, that's all I wanted is to get your attention, to get you to talk to me about something. And your first thought is to just delete the stuff instead of actually just reaching out to me yourself. And say what? And, and, say, and say, hey, I don't is. like this. You have no idea. That was your first thought, to delete the freaking mess, like to delete the song. Instead of just call me. Call and say what? And say, I don't want to delete the song. And I want you on the song. And tell me that you care about me. You said you're gonna sue sure. us, Mons, if you use the, your vocals. But you could have, that was to get your attention. Like, you really don't see that. On TikTok, Lady Zamar did a two part series videos explaining what was actually going on in that recording. Hi, so a couple of days ago, I made a video where I was asking, how do you guys know that I lied and what is the proof of that and I just want to you know point out this comment up here um and this is the most common one that I saw where the reasons why people um have this thing that I lied is because of the voice note which is a recording it's not a voice note it is a recording now, I'm not making this video for anyone but the Zamar Nation, for the Zamartians, the people that support me, for people that have stood by me, people that probably have heard and listened to the voice recording and just been like, what the hell? Now, I couldn't listen to it for a very long time because everything was still raw, you know. Um, but now I have had an opportunity several times to kind of just listen to it. And now I can actually give you guys context of what it was really about and what it is about. Now, just quickly, right, because I've done this part so many times. There was myself, that guy, his producer, um, one or two other people and somebody who drove me there um, in that apartment. That apartment is in Midrand, right, where this recording was taken. I was not aware that I was being recorded. And so obviously, um, even the way I am communicating, it's really not with the, the, the knowledge that I am being recorded in any way. Now, this was in 2018. It was a vocal performance by me, and I did not want my vocal performance on his music. 
I did not want my vocal performance on anything that he was doing at the time. And so I had sent an email to my publisher. I had CC'd his producer that had produced the song or so to my knowledge had produced the song. And I had basically said, you have to remove my, you know, um, vocals. I'm not giving you permission to use my vocals. And if you continue and you do not want to remove my vocals, then I will sue you, which is what is what, what happens. And I'll just give you a little background on how the music business works. So we have composers, we have writers, we have all sorts of people. And these people all get rights, right? So when I perform a vocal on a piece of music, um, that is my intellectual property, which means I'm the only person that can give permission to have it used. So if it gets used outside of me giving permission, that is an illegal use. And that was basically... So I had to make a part two because I was too short. So basically that's how it works. I have to give explicit permission that they can use my vocals. It doesn't matter who it is. I have to give permission to use my vocals, right? To use my, even my words. You, you gotta give intellectual property. So at that time, because I wanted nothing to do with that person, I had said that if you do continue to use my vocals, I will see you. And I'm heard in the voice clip saying, I did that to get your attention. And that is 100% true. Because if somebody is not responding to you saying, I don't want you to use my vocals, please delete them. The only other way you are able to usually get their attention outside of a personal connection is to alert your publisher and to let them know that your publisher is aware of such things. You understand? So for people who might think that, oh my gosh, I'm making this up. No, I'm not. It was an email sent and that email was there, which is probably, allegedly why I was being recorded because it was now a legal matter. Why did I not reach out to him personally? Um, because of the, comp the nature of that engagement, I, I had no desire to be um, doing a back and forth. You know, um, it's a very complicated thing to go through a trauma. Um, but I did try with all my heart and soul to find ways of, around it. And in places that I couldn't, I just couldn't have failed. You know, also considering the fact that I genuinely had always blamed myself and felt like I was the reason why I was in that situation. That something that I had done was, um, was the reason why I was in that thing to begin with, you know. So the voice notes as you guys call it, the voice recording, which it is, does not link to the case in any way, um, in any sort of way, you know? That was 2018. The ordeal happened in 2017. Um, I opened a case in 2019 about, that was like an entire year after that recording and on top of that, like I said, the last time I'd seen this person was like mid-year going into the third quarter of the year. Um, and I opened the case in the fourth quarter, you know, like it was November, October, November, should have been November. Um, yeah. Something that's always disturbed me though is how that voice recording was leaked strategically to make me look like a liar. She also explained to people who questioned why she still felt it was necessary for her to explain even now. I came to speak about this once and once only and we are going to be done with this. Um, once I've addressed everything that needs to be addressed. Um, you know what, it is so important to speak up Standing up for yourself is a superpower that a lot of people don't ever really reap the benefits of. And until people just leave me alone, it is what it is. The trolls will always have power. People always hate. I'm not concerned with people hating. I'm really not. I'm concerned with the people that have gone through what I've gone through. People that um, I'm close with who have suffered watching this entire thing and I'm concerned with my fans. Everyone who wants to troll, you guys can continue. 
I just need you to know how I feel about things and I hope you, it makes you feel good. And also detailing that she did not drop the charges, but that the NPA did drop the charges due to the fact that there was not sufficient evidence. Here's another comment, a one I see quite a lot. Babes, you dropped the charges. Not once have I dropped the charges. Not once have I recanted. Not once have I gone back on what I've said. You know? Um, the National Prosecuting Authority deciding not to prosecute is them deciding not to prosecute because there was not sufficient evidence to guarantee a successful prosecution. That's it, you know? And unfortunately, sometimes the realities of some of these things is that you don't preempt, you don't plan something like that happening to you. So the chances of you also just like coming out and saying it years after the fact usually presents itself with that kind of problem where there is not sufficient evidence to guarantee a successful uh, prosecution, you know? The unfortunate thing is that, um, and it, it's sad, it, it, was, it was very hard to hear, you know? Um, and I think what really broke my heart even more is that when the NPA decided not to prosecute, people just took it as an automatic she lied and it's like you can have no opinion you know you you can decide i do not know what happened you can decide i was not there and you can decide that while the justice system you know could not assist somebody in this case you could also be you could also be happy that the person that you support you know is not going to jail you could do anything but you do not have to abuse me every single day you do not have to make me a punching bag you know and you do not have to come up with narratives that say that i lie just because something that happens to thousands of women millions of women across the world where there's just not enough evidence after the fact to guarantee a successful prosecution you know it doesn't mean the crime didn't happen. And that's my biggest chat when it comes to this issue. Like, I didn't drop the charges. I don't even know where some of these stories came from. I, I don't understand why people feel this way, you know. But people are, you guys are all allowed to have an opinion. Freedom of speech is not just there for the good, for the good stuff, it's also there for the negative. So. You can say what you want, but it's still really heartbreaking to hear people make up stories. Ending up with a public outcry on Twitter, questioning why people hate her so much, saying, why do you guys hate me so much? How have I become such an easy target for you guys? You guys don't know me or my full story. You don't know why I've kept quiet for so long. You guys have no idea how you break a person. I can't move on from your assumptions of what happened. You've made your opinions my truth. What's the end? What's the end goal of all of this hate? And why are you so determined to believe a story that's not even full or mine? When I try to tell you my truth, you guys don't even want to hear it. When I try to move on, you guys attack me. How am I supposed to exist in this space? And when can I just be me and not have to either explain or apologize? After you've commented on my stuff and said the most vile and evil tweets, what do you hope to achieve with it and what action would satisfy you guys? Because I just can't live my life. I can't just tweet and can't just voice my opinions about anything, especially relationships. Please help me out here. Can I move on or should I keep apologizing for trying my absolute best to move on? Do you want me to kill myself? Do you want me to die, be murdered or go to jail? To make you guys happy. Do you guys want me to stop making music or publicly cry so you can see how I actually feel about what happened to me? Please tell me with a praying hands emoji. And this got controversial views as some people still don't believe her, whilst others are saying that just because Java's rape case did not go anywhere doesn't mean he actually did not commit rape. But you guys let us know what you think about it. Do you think Lady Zama was telling the truth? In regards to Java or not, comment down below, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up.